Okay, guys, so let's work through example 8 and example 9. Uh, example 8, as with example 6, is problem solving. And that is uh, something that you should be able to do on your test for sure. But um, example 9, that's kind of a tough one. So I, I'm not sure if that would actually show up on a test. That's a really hard question. Um, but it's very, very interesting problem. So what I would suggest with example eight and nine, as with any problem solving question, try it yourself first. Don't just watch this video or wait for class time for the solution to be presented. Uh, try it yourself first, struggle through it. Remember what we said with growth mindset, have a growth mindset. So while you're struggling, don't give up, think you can do it. Uh, have faith in yourself, persevere. And then, um, you know, maybe you get the answer. It's likely you can do it, okay? And if you don't, then you can consult this video or, you know, some other resource, but try it first by yourself. Really try and struggle through it. I think you can do more than you think you can, all right? So in any case, uh, if you've done all that, you've really tried, here's how this works, all right? So let me read this with you. It says, flying fish use their pectoral fins like airplane wings, of course, these would be the pectoral fins, okay, like airplane wings uh, to glide through the air. Suppose a flying fish reaches a maximum height of five feet after flying a horizontal distance of 33 feet. Okay, maximum height, this is an important thing here, and horizontal distance, that's also important. So, the question is, write a quadratic function in this form, which you should recognize is a vertex form uh, that models the flight path, assuming the fish leaves the water at the point zero zero. I'm not gonna go over this, we've done a lot of that already, and I'm not even sure that that really applies well to this question, so I'm not gonna go over that. I think you can uh, disregard that for now, but let's talk about the rest of this. So. Uh, Always when you're problem solving, one of the good things you can do, one of the good strategies you can follow is to draw diagrams to assist you, okay? Draw a diagram. So I'm gonna draw a diagram, not very accurate, not very beautiful, but it doesn't matter. A diagram that models the situation. So they're saying the fish reaches a maximum height of five feet. So I'm gonna go here and say five feet is there, okay? So height usually, y-axis, horizontal distance, x-axis, okay? Up and down, y, left and right, x, fine. So maximum height of five, that feels like I drew the picture of that correctly, and a horizontal distance of 33 feet, and it says, assuming the fish leaves the water at zero, zero. So here's zero, zero, and then you traveled 33 feet. So 33 feet puts me somewhere out here, all right? Uh, actually, let me let me do it this way. 33 feet is when horizontal distance of 33 feet, horizontal distance of 33 feet, uh, at that point I reach my maximum height of 5 feet. Okay, something like this. This is not to scale, doesn't really matter. But I, the fish leaves the water at 0, 0 and does that. Okay, so this is the fish's maximum height right here. So basically what that tells you is, wait, this is an upside down parabola, uh, uh, another way of saying that is a parabola that's been reflected across the x-axis, and um, it has vertex 33,5, okay, so that's the vertex of this parabola. All right, I know the vertex. They gave me a formula. Plug it in, see what you get. Now, we learned actually different letters for the vertex. Vertex has its own special letters. It was H comma K. Yeah, H comma K. So if I use the formula here and just plug that stuff in, X minus H squared plus K, well, I have them. Okay, Y equals A times X minus H here is 33 squared plus K, which is 5. Okay, and then you feel like, hey, I'm almost done, but there's a problem. 
I need the a value. Okay, so we write quadratic functions like this all the time in vertex form, but you need the a value to tell whether it opens up or down, all that kind of stuff. Now, at this point, just based on our picture, you know that it should open down, so a should be negative, but you have to find a. What can I do? Feels like I'm stuck. But notice, they gave you something. They gave me a point x, y, right? This is a coordinate point on the parabola. So if I substitute into the parabola, it should work. Okay, It should be part of the solution set of the parabola. So what that means is I can come over here and take that point and substitute it into the function. And then you'll see I eliminate all the variables except a, and I can solve for a. Actually, it's not that bad. So if I do that and I put 0 here for y from here, and then a times 0 for x minus 33 squared plus 5, it actually turns into a fairly easy question. So if I then solve for a, take the negative 5 over to the other side, and 0 minus 33 is negative 33 squared. And I'm not even squaring it yet. We can just divide by that. All right. And now, finally, just write down what that says. Negative 5 over, and if you square negative 33, you get positive 1089. That is equals to A. And that's correct. That's the answer. Okay, You can make it a decimal, all kinds of other things, but here's the final answer then. I already had H and K. I just want A. So Y equals negative 5 over 1089 times X minus 33 squared plus 5. And that makes sense because it opens down and my A value is negative. So everything there works out fine. A little bit non-traditional, but uh, definitely a question that you should be able to solve if you're just trying, if you're trying. Really persevere. Don't give up. You can do it. Okay? All right. So that's the answer for that. So let's look at example nine. Example nine is an interesting character. So example nine says... Um, Lifeguards at the beach want to rope off a rect rectangular swimming section, kind of like the picture here. Uh, and they have P feet of rope with buoys, okay? Buoys are these circular things that keep the rope up, keep the rope floating in the water. In terms of P, what is the maximum area that the swimming section can have? In other words, here's the area all right. What is what can I do with L and W? And knowing that my rope is P feet long, okay? You have P feet of rope, right? So it's P feet long. Knowing that information, uh, what's the maximum area that I can make? Now, maximum area means most people can swim in there. So this is something that a lifeguard probably wants to know, okay? Uh, I want the most people to be able to swim. All right, so what can I do? This is tough stuff, but you can work with what you're given. Okay, so just write down some stuff. Okay, another strategy for problem solving. Just write down information that you were given. Okay, I know that the rope is P feet long. Okay, so you can write rope equals P feet long. <laughs> But I also know that the rope is W plus L plus W long, okay? That would be the perimeter of this semi-rectangle. It's not a real rectangle. It's not a half a rectangle. The one side is missing over here, okay? But um, this shape, this rectangular swimming area or swimming section, you know, the length of it is... W plus L plus W. Okay, so you can write an equation for that. You can say that the perimeter of the section 
is P equals uh, w plus W plus L, which is 2W plus L, right? Now, this is deceptive. I'm saying perimeter, but P is also the length of the rope. Just in this case, that doesn't really make a difference. It actually stays true, okay? P would be the perimeter, and P is also the length of the rope at the same time. So just coincidentally, P is the letter we use for perimeter. So it still works out. There's no problem there, okay? We don't just, we're actually talking about two different things, but in this case, it's fine if you think of them as the same thing. All right, and then uh, area. So this would be our like our equation one. And then area. Now, I don't know what the area is, the maximum area, what that is, but I know what the area of the rectangle is. And so whether this side is missing or not, the area is still the same. So I can just use the same area formula we always use for a rectangle, which is length times width. Okay. Now you're sitting looking at this going, all right, let's call this equation two. But I don't know what to do after this. What am I doing? So Usually in situations like this, when I have two equations, this is what we call a system of equations, and I'm trying to do something with it. But it says in terms of P, in terms of P, in other words, your equation should only include P. What is the maximum area? So my uh, area equation should only have P's in it, okay? So somehow I want to do something with the area equation to make sure it only has P's in it. So what you do there, if you think about it carefully, again, you should have tried this and struggled first by yourself, is make a substitution. Frequently, we want to make substitutions, okay? And so we're going to take this and say, wait, there's an L and a W here. How about I just substitute for the L whatever the perimeter equation would let me substitute? So if I solve this for L, I just subtract the two W. So I get L equals p minus 2w, all right? So I still have an equation here that comes from the perimeter equation that expresses L in terms of p and w. Now, I can substitute this in here for L, all right? And see what I get. So let's do that. A equals and L is p minus 2w times W. Okay. Uh, I'm getting somewhere. I'm not sure where, how far I'm getting, but I'm getting somewhere. Okay. So let's see what happens. I can just work with this and maybe distribute the W, right? So I get uh, A equals PW minus 2W squared. And W is the width. P is the length of the rope. Okay. So if I take that, maybe rearrange it a little bit, you'll see, hopefully you notice something. 2w squared plus pw. I just switched these two terms around. Okay, so now you have this. So this is an equation we can actually work with, okay? If you look at this carefully, I'm gonna label this equation three. If you look at this carefully, this is a quadratic equation that gives me the area um, of the uh, rectangular section but it depends on the width and it depends on the length of the rope P okay it depends on the width it depends on the length of the rope P so what I do with this is say okay consider this a standard form of a quadratic equation so let's say a would be the equivalent of y, and let's do this, ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, see, my square here corresponds to w, so this would correspond to x. So w is really my x, and a is really my y variable in this case. Now I have an a and a b, okay? My c is nothing, but I have an a here, which is negative 2, and a b, which is p. So my B value is the length of the rope, and A is negative 2. 
So this is just a regular old quadratic function. And the question was, find the maximum area. Well, we know how to find maximums or minimums. That's the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, It's the y-coordinate of the vertex. And so all I have to do is go, okay, to find the maximum x-coordinate or the x-coordinate of the vertex, I just say x equals, and in this case we said x and w are the same. So I'm going to say w is the variable we want to use, and that's equals to negative b over 2a. Well, negative b in this case, b is p, negative p over 2 times a, which is negative 2. So what I have is negative p over negative 4, which is just p over 4. So the x-coordinate of the vertex of this quadratic function right here, which gives me the x-coordinate of the maximum area that the rectangular section can be, is p over 4. So I found that. So all I have to do now, uh, let me switch to another color, is go back here and say, OK, let me find the y-coordinate of the maximum area. Okay, uh, So I go here and I say area. And I have the area equation. Area equals negative 2w squared plus pw. But all I need to do is substitute this for w. Right? For w. Substitute this for w. And then I'm going to eliminate w and come up with an equation in terms of p only, which is exactly what I asked. In terms of p, come up with the maximum area for the swimming section. So we can do that. <laughs> Let's substitute. a equals negative 2 times uh, p over 4 squared plus p times p over 4. And what you get is... Uh, basically, negative 2 times p squared over 16 plus p squared over 4. Okay? And keep working on that. You get basically this and this cancel. So you get negative p squared over 8 plus p squared over 4. And if you keep working with that, Simplify common denominators, all that kind of stuff. You get negative p squared over 8 plus 2p squared over 8. And that gives you p squared over 8. Okay? So that is the y-coordinate of the vertex of the area parabola. Okay? That gives you the maximum possible area that the function, uh, that the rectangular swimming area can have or swimming section can have. So the vertex, we're saying, will happen at p over 4 and p squared over 8. Okay, So from the area function, I see that that's the maximum area that I could have, this number right here, when the width is p over 4. That's a tough, tough question. Okay, Tough question. I hope this helped you guys. All right.